There are many verses about the character of Jesus in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Do you have any general comments about how the Bible portrays your character? <laughs> yes, certainly. And the Bible portrays my character very inconsistently, I feel, on a lot of different subjects. You know, I, it portrays my character in terms of inconsistent in the way that I ethically dealt with people, for example. It portrays my character uh, very uh, inconsistently when it comes to my dealings with women. It basically tells people that I was celibate when I was married, for example. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it's basically written you out of my life mm -hmm. in the first century. And, uh, and as a result of that, it's very inaccurate when it comes to my day-to-day -day living life and my relationship with you and our relationship to truth and so forth. It uh, contains a lot of inconsistencies about my feelings about power and control uh, and judgment, mm -hmm. in fact. You know, it strongly recommends that I, I strongly recommend to others that they do not judge while at the same time accept judgment from God, uh, accept that I'm the judge from God uh, as, a, as a role. Mm -hmm. And this is very inconsistent. It also contains a lot of uh, misinformation about power um, and my desire for power, uh, which I have none. And the Bible suggests that uh, in some places that, that I had no desire for power whatsoever, and in other places that I have a large desire for power, and perhaps we can illustrate that in other questions. Mm -hmm. So it's very inconsistent in the way in which it portrays me at times. Then there's other areas that are quite consistent in the way that it portrays myself and my life. You know, it portrays me of having a deep desire for God and a deep relationship with God that, that everyone around me recognised. And that's true. That's how it was. Um, it portrays me as having a care for other people, although not consistently portraying, me that, so, uh, portraying that, you know. Sometimes it seems to indicate that I didn't care. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, again, it's uh, inconsistent on some issues and consistent on other matters. And the best thing I can do is at some point in the future, you know, we can go through a lot of our personal life in comparison with the Bible and just list what is true and what isn't true. And, uh, but it, in some ways, it would be better for us to just say what is true and then a yeah. person can make their own comparison. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So you're saying that it's, in terms of its portrayal of your character, it's inaccurate in terms of portraying you as sometimes wanting power, sometimes not. Um, Being a judge, which I don't want. Yeah. And never have. So, and being celibate. Being celibate, yes. Uh, and then on the other hand, it's, it's being more... A, being a son of a, of a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's many things. Yeah. Which, are, which is false. Yeah. Uh, and then in terms of your character, it's more accurate uh, in your high regard and desire for a relationship with God? Definitely. And what about the focus of your life or the focus of your um, character? Yeah, I, I didn't care very much for material possessions and I still don't. I focus primarily on sharing truth with others. That's my focus. That comes out in the Bible quite strongly. Yeah. And so there are other parts of my character. I was quite forceful in dealing with untruth, which yes. is very much the case now. So, you know, there are other parts of my character that it does correctly portray. Sure. Sure. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, again, there's consistency in certain areas and inconsistency in other areas. And this is the trouble with uh, such a text that has had modification over thousands of years, mm -hmm. is that eventually it becomes inconsistent and therefore cannot be assumed to be the correct the correct truth. Unfortunately too, religion has distorted what the Bible says quite, quite, quite a lot actually. So many religious people are shocked when they read their own Bible because their own religion has practices that are not contained within the Bible and has different uh, principles that are not contained within the Bible. For, for example, the Catholic Church, the founding, if you like, of many of the other churches uh, before the Reformation contain this principle that men should be, uh, men who are priests should be celibate and, uh, and should not be married. But the Bible says the opposite to that, in fact. And if you read the book of Timothy, for example, it recommends that people who are priests should be married. So, you know, the Bible recommends exactly the opposite of what some of the religious practices of our day currently are. Yeah. And so you can see that many of these practices have been introduced by men's own concept 
and have had no reference whatsoever to the Bible, in fact. So, and I find that quite amusing at times that many people who email us saying you should be doing this and should be doing that, you know, we could, if I, if I wanted to, just email them straight back and go, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that because that's what your Bible says and you're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and the reality is I don't believe in having that kind of a conversation with people. I feel that people are, if people are open and honest and sincerely asking, then I'd be happy to show them even the inconsistencies in their own Bible and also the inconsistencies in their own religion comparison with the Bible. Mm -hmm. For example, many times people who have been religious have gone to war. And in fact, many times the, the priests and ministers of such religions have got up on the pulpit and encouraged their people to go to war. Now, that is completely the opposite of what I would do yeah. and completely the opposite of what Jesus in the first century, even if you don't believe I'm Jesus, the Jesus in the first century would have done. And anybody who's realistic would know that and so therefore would never be able to, would never be able to agree with their church doing that. Yeah. And so I see many times churches being very hypocritical in their statements to me because they themselves do not practice the words that are contained in the book that they believe is God's word. Mm. 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 Okay. I feel there are very few religions on earth that are not hypocritical with regard to how they treat the Bible. Very few religions. Um, you know, most of them are hypocritical in some manner in the way in which they treat the Bible, in the way in which they follow it. And particularly on the issue of war, particularly on the issue of you know, harming other people, they are, they are very choosy when it comes to what they follow and what they don't follow. Mm. And you look at the, for example, the American religious right, I think it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, the Christian religious right in America, they are, they are nationalistic and violently nationalistic. They're prepared to go to war with pretty much anyone who disagrees mm. with them. And that is in direct contradiction to what the Bible and particularly my life demonstrated mm. in the first century. So, so this is an area where people are being very, very hypocritical mm. when it comes to their record and, and looking at the Bible. Mm. Mm.